Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar on Making Tax Digital for VAT. Um, my name's Phil Thornton, and I am Senior Product Manager for Digital at Walters Kluwer. A bit of an introduction, my, my background, um, previously I worked as an accountant in industry. Um, I worked across a, actually a number of industries. I started off in printing and then moved on to a grain merchants and ended up actually in the art industry. Um, I also have experience of, of, of running an SME, um, so understand what it's like to be running your own VAT returns. And then since 2007, I've been working in the in the tax and accounting software industry, primarily in product, product management roles. What are we going to cover today in this webinar? Um, we're going to we're going to start looking a little bit at the what does the VAT process look like today for advisors. That's just covering a little bit of the research that we've undertaken here at Walters Kluwer. We're going to try and keep that quite high level. Then we're going to move into how will making tax digital for VAT impact you and your clients. And what we're going to focus on in this section is more around some of the, the myths and truths that we've been hearing. We're not going to go end to end on, on, on all things um, on the legislation, really pinpointing just a few key areas that we've been hearing and try and clarify those areas um, to, to support you with this transition. Then we'll move into what should you be thinking about now. So with, with all that information uh, in mind, what can you be doing right now to help support your practice make that transition? And then finally, we'll, we'll finish off with a little bit about what we can do to help you with the transition and we'll have a, a Q&A. Um, we don't expect this to last the full hour, this, this webinar. Um, we do have, I'm just looking, we do have a couple of hundred people on the webinar, so we'll try and answer as many questions as possible any questions that we don't get around to answer in the webinar itself, um, we will um, we will obviously um, send out the answers to those questions following the following the webinar. So, what does the VAT process look like today? So, in order to understand where we need to be going, it's been a it's been a it's really been a key requirement for us to understand what the VAT processes for advisors and their clients look like today. So in the first part of this webinar, I'm going to briefly touch on the outputs of some research that we've done in this area. So the, 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 the research objectives that we had, um, we, we were really keen to understand what the end-to-end -end processes today look like for advisors and your clients in that VAT process and thinking about not just about um, what you're doing but in terms of how you're engaging with clients, how you send information back and forward, um, also thinking about the solutions that are being used to support that process and then thinking about you know the conversations that are taking place currently in terms of MTD for that and that transition. So with that in mind, what did we find out? Well, actually, there's probably nothing new here um, in terms of in, in terms of um, what and what the processes look like. So each practice obviously has their own makeup of clients from a wide range of industries. And what we what we found was that dependent on those clients and types of industries and also location, potentially, that can dictate the processes that are used um, in this process. One of the more interesting things that we found out was actually each individual practice can have subtly different VAT processes, processes depending on their individual portfolio of clients. So what we're seeing there is really there was no, we didn't find that there was a almost a, a go-to guide for how to do this. You could have portfolio managers or you could have client relationship managers and they themselves might have their own processes for how they deal with those clients depending on a number of different a number of different um, aspects. Thinking about solutions again, there was no there was no real one size fits all here, as you can imagine. So there was a there was a wide range of solutions being used. So you can there was manual records um, still being maintained. Some clients were scanning copies of documents and sending those over to the advisor. Spreadsheets came out loud and clear, but also some key bookkeeping solutions were, were mentioned regularly. Thinking about bookkeeping software though, what, what we heard a lot of was bookkeeping software can be used end to end, but more generally in the more simple VAT cases. And as soon as something became a little bit more complex, whether the scheme was determining that, 
then spreadsheets were, 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 were more, more and more heavily used. The other, the other important aspect that came out of this, and this was probably the one consistent theme that came out, was that the HMRC filing service continues to be the most used filing service. And it was 87% of all VAT submissions um, were using this filing service. So, in a nutshell, there's not really one process for how your clients are dealing with VAT, v, how you and your clients are dealing with VAT. The client, the industry, the solutions used can all play a part. But like I say, the one consistent theme that came out of that was the HMRC's online filing service. I think there's two main reasons for this. One is spreadsheets are often playing a huge part in this processes, bringing, um, bringing that process out of the bookkeeping solutions. And B, um, advisors and clients did state that they wanted this absolute confirmation that the return was sent okay and they didn't feel 100% comfortable at the moment that the, the, the solutions that were providing that were, were giving them that, which was obviously an interesting, an interesting comment. So now we'll start to focus on the transition to making tax digital and really the, the, key, the key part of this webinar. So thinking about how you'll be able to work with these clients and hopefully clarify um, many of the points which have, appears, which have appeared to be causing some confusion recently um, in the market. So we're going to ask some questions to start off with. So the first fact or fiction, will spreadsheets be an acceptable form of digital record keeping? There, may, there should be a question come up now. Um, if you could answer the question and we'll just give you a little time to answer that. Okay, so the results are in. Um, many of you um, are so that many of you are right in your thinking that um, digital record keeping will be an acceptable form of um, spreadsheets will be an acceptable form of digital record keeping, and we'll come onto this um, in a moment. Second question: Can spreadsheets continue to be used for the purposes of making any necessary adjustments with making tax digital for that? So here, what we're saying is, if you're if you're currently using bookkeeping solutions, if you're bringing that data out into a spreadsheet, will that be able to be continued in the in in with making tax digital for that? Okay, so the results. Um, Approximately 20% in both cases um, believed that spreadsheets would not be um, possible to be used with making tax digital for VAT. Another 20% were in the don't know camp and approximately 60% were in the yes camp. So fact number one, spreadsheets can continue to be used. The reason I've chosen this as our first fact is because there is so much misinformation on this point. As explained already, spreadsheets are heavily used in the VAT process. HMRC have acknowledged this, yet the market is telling us in some instances that this is not perhaps in the spirit of making tax digital. Um, this is incorrect, and you have invested, you know, you've invested heavily in these spreadsheets over the last few years. And the good news is that they actually continue to be used. It's acceptable as a form of digital record keeping. Um, and, you know, for smaller clients, this could be a logical first step to digitalization if they're using manual records currently. Sometimes the, 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 the switch to bookkeeping solutions can be quite the daunting task. And actually, for those smaller clients, um, they might have really um, low volumes of transactions and they can't really justify um, the cost involved in that as well. And for larger VAT registered businesses, some of your clients maybe using these for very complex calculations and adjustments, and there's a lot of effort gone into them. And you know, in my background, uh, particularly in the arts industry, we, we, um, we had a lot of partial exemption calculations in spreadsheets. They can continue to be used as part of the VAT process. 
So what, what, what I'm really saying here is, as an advisor, you can continue to have that choice when it comes to looking at the, the, the solutions and the processes that best deal with each individual client. Don't feel like you need to, to be forced down a certain route because of um, spreadsheets, um, because um, the, the need to move away from spreadsheets. Okay, our next fact or fiction. Will it be mandatory for the underlying data to also be submitted with the VAT return? Okay, um, very interesting. So 34% of you say yes, 52% say no, and 15% have stated don't know. So with making tax digital, the nine boxes remain the same. It's only the nine box boxes that are required to be submitted. Um, obviously, this data needs to be submitted using compatible software, but for those over the over the VAT threshold. Um, the reason we we wanted to bring this one out is because many of our customers that we've spoken to have been informed that the underlying transactions will need to be submitted from 2020. This isn't the case. It will only be the nine boxes and HMRC have actually clarified that there's no plans to, to, to request for anything other than the nine boxes to be submitted. Now, saying that, the calculations that make up the return can be voluntarily submitted to HMRC as part of this. And they will be used in the first instance in, in case of any investigations. But there's no um, mandation that the, the, the underlying transactions will need to be submitted. So it's just to clarify, it's just the nine, nine boxes. OK, next fact or fiction. Will HMRC's online service remain beyond April 2019? Okay, we have the results. So 65% of you believe yes, 27% believe no, and 8% don't know. So the online filing service remains, um, actually, um, but it's for those over, the, um, so for those over the VAT threshold, um, they do need to find compatible software from, from April 19. There's, there's, no, there's no getting away from that, and I'm, 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 I'm assuming that's the majority of your clients. But the HMRC, HMRC's online service will remain but it's only for businesses who are voluntarily registered for VAT or under the VAT threshold and have not yet transitioned to making tax digital for VAT. Once a business has transitioned to making tax digital, they cannot go back to the filing service. So, you know, once it's done, it's done. Um, MTD exempt businesses will also be able to use this service. But again, there is a little bit of misinformation around this point. Um, and some confusion around what happens to those under the threshold. Fact or fiction, are digital links mandatory from April 2019? Okay, 53% of you have said yes, 22% no, and 25% don't know. So HMRC are allowing for a grace period uh, where links between software products will not need to be digital links initially. Now, copy and paste does not constitute a digital link. That's something that we we'll really need to get across. But this will be acceptable within this first 12 months, this soft landing period. There is one exception to that in the first 12 months where if you are using bridging software and the sole purpose of that solution is to submit to HMRC's APIs, these links do require to be digital or are required to be digital from day one. The reason, again, we've pulled this one out is because we've spoken to our customers where there's been a bit of a misunderstanding around the soft landing period. Again, going back to a previous point, um, there was a bit of misinformation where the soft landing period people were thinking that referred to the underlying data so 
in the first 12 months I can submit the nine boxes only but from 2020 I need to sub um, I need to submit the underlying data and that's the soft landing period well actually that's 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 not correct and the soft landing period refers specifically to this digital links point So those are the four key areas that we've identified that are causing the most confusion in the market at the moment. And we've, you know, we've heard a, couple, a, a few things recently in very recent weeks where, um, particularly on the point of spreadsheets, where um, people have been misinforming the market and saying that they are not, um, they are not in the spirit of making tax digital. But we're just here today to say, absolutely, if you've got if you've got you know processes in place that support spreadsheets please be reassured that they can continue um, as we transition to making tax digital so thinking about you know how you work today understanding what mtd means across some of those key areas what should you be thinking about now um, as you move forward with with making tax digital So the first thing we would advise is to start thinking now about segmenting your client base. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do this and we we are just um, we are providing this as an example of how you could do that. So we've broken this up into three groups. We have a group A, which is business with, businesses with a turnover below the VAT threshold. Um, exempt clients are those who may wish to voluntarily transition to making tax digital. And these should be probably one of the, the, the easier groups to, to deal with. And then you have those over the VAT threshold, which we've split into two groups. So group B are those who are over the threshold and are already using um, digital tools, such as an um, on-premise or online bookkeeping system or currently entering data into a spreadsheet. And then this third group, group C, is those over the threshold who are currently not using any of those methods for the purposes of digital record keeping. So once you've segmented those clients, you probably want to start thinking about how you can start to engage those clients over the coming months as we transition towards April 2019. So thinking about Group A and those below the threshold, we think that that's October is the right time to start thinking about, you know, contacting those clients to, to explain what making tax digital for VAT is, let them you know, make them aware that unless they voluntarily move to MTD for that, nothing is going to change for those clients. And then inform them that they can carry on using HMRC's online service to submit those returns. For Group B clients, those over the threshold who are currently using solutions, again, in October, we would advise start thinking about um, contacting those to explain what making tax digital for that is. Tell, tell your clients what changes they can expect. Um, if they're using solutions where we, they can currently submit VAT returns directly from the bookkeeping software, um, and they are happy doing that, or you're doing it on their behalf, then they should be relatively easy to transition to the process. But if spreadsheets are currently being used, um, it's probably something within the practice that you'll not need to start thinking about. Um, have you got a solution in place that's spreadsheet aware can can start to consume those those um, spreadsheets for the purposes of submitting to the revenue? And if you have got that in place, thinking about how you communicate that with your clients. Group C, over the threshold, but currently using manual systems. So again, very similar story. We think October is a good time to start thinking about contacting those clients, explaining what making tax digital for VAT is. Um, again, tell your clients what changes they can expect. And this is where we probably really need to start thinking about offering guidance and training to transition those clients potentially to bookkeeping systems or more likely perhaps a standardized spreadsheet or even look at the advisor yourself taking on the responsibility for digital record keeping on their behalf just to make sure everything's in the in the form that it should be and then in november for those same group of clients you know it's really that's going to be a chasing period so have you heard back from those clients if not you know let's let's get them to take some action and start thinking about this um again start thinking about you know if you've had those conversations with those clients about transitioning to a bookkeeping solution and there's not a massive amount of interest there 
can you supply a standardized spreadsheet just to collect the data from them um, and again alternatively suggest to keep digital records and maybe half make that one last attempt um, to have that conversation as we move into 2019 again we'll be focusing on group b's and group c's these are the these are the categories of clients that are going to be transitioning to making tax digital so in january remind clients that you know it's only it's now only three months away and then start getting them to really think about you know this is the data that we're going to be expecting from you as your advisor um what we need and when we need it and then February, perhaps that's a nice opportunity to start speaking to those clients about the additional bookkeeping and advisory services your practice can offer. So again, if you're engaging with those about potentially taking on some of those, some of those tasks, February feels like a good time to really get that nailed down and, and ensure engagement terms and the likes are in place. March, um, that's when we're starting to think about, you know, it's only one month away. You know, you could do you could be doing this as a as an email newsletter. It doesn't have to be hard copy letters going out, um, or a blog of some kind. Um, but remind your clients that MTD for VAT is now just one month away, and again explain how you're going to be collecting data from them, what data you need them to provide you with, and any specific dates. Perhaps a checklist could help you with with that process. And in April, um, well, MTD for VAT goes live on the first of April, so now it's a time to really start getting into the, the new processes um, and again use this as an opportunity to explain what other services you offer um, to help them with growing their business so you can really take that that potential admin burden away from the client. So how can Walters Kluwer help you? So we've thought a bit about the VAT processes you go through today. We've covered some of the the key mtd points and started to think about how you can be engaging with your clients to ensure the transaction the transition is successful in in terms of how walters kluwer can help you from a solution perspective i can probably summarize this as follows so in our mind in terms of the solution that we'll be building at walters kluwer there's no need to recreate VAT functionality that currently exists within many of the bookkeeping solutions today. We understand, like we've mentioned, that for those simple end-to-end -end cases, bookkeeping solutions are going to have the functionality that, that can really help you and your clients with that process. Um, but we do realise that advisors have significant legacy calculations and formulas within spreadsheets. So our solution is going to be thinking about how we can work on that, more on that side of, of, of things. We want to obviously support you, our advisors, and, and your clients by delivering um, a VAT filing solution that allows you to maintain your current VAT processes as closely as possible. So it's not going to be 100% the same, but we understand that we you don't want to be, come April next year, starting to reinvent the, the, the VAT filing process. So the solution that we're coming up with is really trying to mirror process today and transition it as effortly as possible towards the make tax digital process. And the final point here, our, our VAT filing solution will be um, added as a new feature within our making tax digital tool set within CCH one click. So many of you have probably already seen our, our, our CCH one click solution. That's our making tax digital solution. And this will be additional functionality um, added to that, to that tool set. So what next? Um, well, in order to see the solution, we uh, it would be great you know, to have you attend one of our roadshow events to see the solution in action. We're really proud of the solution that we've, we are building um, and the plan is for that to be available within um, October. So our roadshows start um, on October the 16th and it'll be really great to be able to, to show that to you in one of those roadshows and also, um, you know, speak to your account manager for any more information. Um, they they might be able to share a little bit more detail about what what you can expect to see in CCH One Click. Also, um, that just leaves me to then go on to any of your questions. So, just bear with me a moment. We'll see how many we have here. Okay, we'll start with. This one. 
So the first one was when will your solution be released? Well, we've just mentioned, um, so our solution is going to be available within CCH one click. It'll be available from next month. We're just in the closing stages now of our development. And like I say, we'll be showcasing this at our at our roadshows. I believe the roadshow will start in Belfast on the 16th of October. Um, will I also be required to file my EC sales list as part of Making Tax Digital? No, so the, the EC sales list submissions are not impacted by Making Tax Digital and this process simply continues as before. Can you clarify which is the first return I have to submit under Making Tax Digital? I have seen both in articles, the first VAT period that's, that ends after 1st of April 2019, or the first VAT period that starts after this date. So VAT registered businesses will transition to Making Tax Digital on the first VAT period that starts after the 1st of April 2019. What's an API enabled spreadsheet and do I need one? Okay, I've heard a little bit about API enabled spreadsheets um, recently. So an API enabled spreadsheet is when a spreadsheet itself has the capability to send data directly to HMRC's APIs without the need to use any additional software. So if you are using CCH one click to submit your VAT returns, your spreadsheets won't need to be API enabled. So our solution is going to be able to work with any spreadsheets that you're currently using today. So I hope, I hope that helps answer that one. Will HMRC be offering a solution via their website? Um, so HMRC have always maintained they will not be providing solutions for making tax digital and and this continues to be the case and um, we, we, we haven't heard anything to to, to go against that. So what if my client income drops back below 85,000? Can I go back to manual filing? Um, so once a client has transitioned to making tax digital, they can't go back to manual filing once they drop under the threshold, if they continue to be VAT registered. So if they drop under the threshold, I suppose it would be a conversation around whether they deregister for VAT or not. Okay, will will this still go ahead even if there's a no deal Brexit? Um, so currently Brexit, from what I hear, is not impacting on the go live date um, of the 1st of April. Obviously the government are preparing for the possibility of a no deal, no deal Brexit, but we, we've received no indication at this stage that the go live plans will change depending on the result of whatever Brexit deal or not that is agreed. Um, that's not to say that there might not be changes from a VAT perspective, but not relating to the goal live of MTD for that. I have a client where standard rated supplies are below 85,000, but exempt supplies take the total turnover above 85,000. Do they have to use the new system? Um, so, Vatable Vantable turnover is the is essentially the total value of everything that you sell that is not exempt from VAT. So I would expect in this scenario that this client wouldn't be required to make the transition to making tax digital if their vantable supplies are below the eighty five thousand threshold. Will one click be able to be used after the 12 month soft landing in 2020? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the VAT functionality within within one click um, won't be impacted by the, the 12 month soft landing period. Um, essentially from when this product's launched, it'll be ready to go as as as, as a product with, without even considering that. Um, soft landing period. So you, you'd be absolutely fine with one click. Um, will our clients be automatically enrolled in MTD for VAT or do we need to do something? So um, you'll need to go through an exercise of identifying which 
clients you undertake VAT work for and which of those have turnover over the VAT threshold. You'll then have to register each of these clients, I mean all the, all the clients can do this themselves, on HMRC's website to get them registered for MTD for VAT. It's similar to the approach that we had for self-assessment and, and also VAT returns where the onus is on the taxpayer to inform HMRC that they meet the requirements to undertake this type of reporting. Sorry, I'm just looking through the list of questions. We have quite a lot coming through. So uh, we currently use CCH Central Personal Tax. Do we need CCH One Click for MTD? Um, the answer is yes. CCH One Click is our is our um, is our making tax digital solution. Um, just to clarify the point on um, dates, so it is the first return on or after the 1st of April 2019. Um, can we watch this presentation offline? Yes, there'll be a recording sent, I believe, tomorrow after this. Um, Can we use CCH, so CCH one click for VAT filing before the first people? Yes. So our plan is to, like I mentioned, to launch this functionality in October. The plan there really was we wanted our customers to be able to use this for a full six months before that MTD for VAT went live. So we're hoping that many of you will take this opportunity to get on board with one click, use the solution, get used to it, and there'll actually be no charge for the MTD element of one click for those six months until April. Um, so really just to, to make sure that you can get used to the solution, but also from our point of view, it's, it's, really, it's really helpful to us to have many people using the solution so we can, ahead of 1st of April, make sure that it's, it's doing everything that it needs to do. Just having to look through any other any questions that I don't get to answer today, we will of course answer and send round after the webinar as well. If we are currently using Zero or QuickBooks for bookkeeping for clients, can we convert to CCH one click? So, so for the purposes of VAT, the way I see that working is um, if you. Uh, Let's let's take zero as an example. You could export the VAT return from zero into a spreadsheet, and then from there do any necessary calculations. Or even if you don't want to do any calculations, you can upload that into one click, and it'll automatically pick up the nine box information from 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 there. So yes, irrespective of that solution, that any solutions that you're using, you should be able to use CCH one click. Outside of VAT, we obviously have our open integration functionality, which Zero and QuickBooks feed data into. Um, so for the purposes of, um, for those of you who may be part of making tax digital for income tax, we can bring data directly through from those providers and populate the quarterly reporting from there directly. If we use spreadsheets to prepare the return, what is needed to link it with MTD? So um, the short answer is nothing really. So if you have a spreadsheet today, we will upload that spreadsheet into one click and we will be able to read the nine boxes from that spreadsheet. Um, so there's no, there's no additional um, there's no additional tools needed as part of that process. Will monthly returns still be allowed? Yes. Um, difference between digital links and underlying transactions. So underlying transactions, when we talk about underlying transactions, 
we're talking about the transactions that make up the nine boxes. So as I mentioned earlier, it's only the nine box information that needs to be submitted. Digital links is how information flows from one solution to another. So as I've mentioned, you may be in zero, you export that information into a, into a spreadsheet, that is a digital link. That spreadsheet is then uploaded to CCH one click, that is a digital link. Copying and, pa copying and pasting, although okay in the soft landing period, doesn't con constitute a digital link. And obviously manually entering numbers into a spreadsheet from a VAT report would not constitute a digital link. What format does the data in a spreadsheet need to be in to import into CCH one click? Well, to be honest, um, there is, there's no format. So one of the things we've really tried to do here is we didn't want to provide our customers with a standardized template and say, I know you've got all these wonderful weird calculations going on in spreadsheets, but here's now a new spreadsheet for you have to work to. What we've built is a, a, a solution that allows you to maintain your spreadsheets in whatever format. So you may have smaller clients who have the digital records in a spreadsheet. They also have their um, bank reconciliations in a spreadsheet, and then they also have their VAT returns. In other cases, you might just have a couple of tabs that are all around the the calculations and then the nine boxes. It doesn't really matter. We'll just identify those nine boxes um, within the one click upload process. Price structure for one click. A um, couple of things I can do there. We can probably send round more details on that after the webinar um, as part of the, any questions that we've missed. Um, but alternatively, also, you can speak to your um, account manager who, who could provide you with any of the information around that. I'm just looking through any more final questions. So how does how does the one click software identify the info for the nine boxes and does it need to be in a certain format? No, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't need to be in a certain format. Um, there is a there is a there is a process that we go through around um, how those cells are named. So if I give you a really quick example, you name the boxes, box one, box two, and so on. Um, and that will that will um, that will inform one click of the boxes that it needs to pick up. But essentially, there's no change to your current spreadsheets. We don't ask you to put it into any particular format or anything or anything like that. And I'm just looking through to see if I've missed anything that I can answer now. Don't think so. So, uh, any any questions that I have missed, um, we will pick them up and we will respond to all questions after the webinar and send them out. Um, I'm just going to ask a question: Do we are we going to send them out so everyone can see everyone's questions? Yeah. So we'll send it out as so everyone can see everyone's questions and you, you can see the answers to those questions. Um, but that's that's it from us today. Um, I hope it's been useful. The, like I say, the, the key bit that we wanted to get out today were those four those four facts. They're the pieces that we're speaking to customers, and um, we're speaking to customers. And there's definitely some misinformation around those four four key points. So I hope that's provided some clarity, and um, I hope to be able to see you on the on the roadshows also. Thank you very much for your time.